As the president's limousine rolls towards the manhole cover, a person remotely pulls the trigger, and suddenly, nothing happens. Wait, what? The remote trigger didn't work, and that is because of this car, the Electronic Countermeasure Suburban, one of the most technically impressive vehicles in the motorcade. Wait. On Wait, what the hell is going on, my friends? What? Today I will be reacting to how the US president travels. Okay, this will be a fascinating one. But before I go into that, uh, let me ask you for one thing. If you can leave a like, uh, thank you so much, my friend. This is the best way to show support. Uh, if you can subscribe, uh, well, in that case, uh, forget about it. You make my day. Have that in consideration. Now, link for the original video in my description. Um, I actually remember when Obama came to Portugal and the amount of security was completely insane. So I'm really curious to check this video out. It is the worst nightmare of the Secret Service. Huh? An attack on the President of the United States while he's traveling. Hidden beneath this manhole cover is a bomb that went undetected. Oh no. And it can be triggered remotely. Just seconds from now, the presidential motorcade will be passing over exactly this spot. But this is not the only danger. Wait, how can they stop this actually? No chance! A few blocks away, there is a second threat. Located in a dimly lit room, Ooh, a sniper. sniper is overlooking the intersection, where the president will soon be. Oh, and no. a little further down the road, a van with tinted windows is parked, close to the blocked off streets. Inside, a man is preparing a rocket launcher that will soon be Holy. aimed at the motorcade. Fortunately, these three scenarios are purely fictional, but they will demonstrate the rigorous effort the Secret Service undertakes to ensure that the president remains secure during travel. Okay, wait a second. Okay. So, the threat number two and the threat number three, three not three, three, potato, potato. Uh, but I can see how you guys stop them. Actually, I cannot, but I don't know. A different sniper snipes both. Pro, yeah, job then. But the threat number one, dude, I don't know. Oh, because if the explosive is already there. Hmm service undertakes to ensure that the president remains secure during travel. While the president is still about two minutes away from the manhole cover with the bomb, the first car of the motorcade, the route car, is already driving past this spot. This car, together with the pilot car, ensures that the road is clear of obstructions. The sweepers, which are primarily motorcycles, follow the route car and pilot car and help clear the road ahead. Okay. However, they are unable to identify the bomb, yeah. and the core of the motorcade consisting of Secret Service vehicles with the President on board is approaching. As the President's limousine rolls towards the manhole cover, a person remotely pulls the trigger, and suddenly... Nothing happens. Wait, what? The remote trigger didn't work. And that is because of this car. The Electronic Countermeasure Suburban. One of the most technically impressive vehicles in the motorcade. Wait. On Wait, what the hell is going on, my friends? What? On its roof, antennas emit radio frequencies that drown out any bomb activation signal. This technique is called Barrett Jamming and it essentially works by the antennas emitting such a strong noise signal that other- Dude, that's insane, my friends. Do you, you guys have this technology? Holy! Oh wow, this is really impressive. Am I crazy? No chance, this- What? I thought there was no way. I thought, yeah, Biden is he gone. No chance, he, no, the bomb. What? Well, Biden is back, I guess, I mean. Other signals simply cannot get through. And so, the motorcade continues undisturbed towards the second threat, the sniper in the window. Located behind the electronic countermeasure suburban is the president's vehicle, commonly known by its nickname, the Beast. However, 
Mr. Beast? Oh boy, that's okay, that's a name. However, you can never be sure in which car the president is, as there are two identical presidential limousines on the road. Oh, that's really smart. Yeah. Oh, that's really, really smart. You never... Oh, wow. Okay, Americans really thought this one out. Because, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but you had, what, two presidents that got killed at one point, right? Kennedy, and I don't remember the other one. But uh, I feel like uh, there was two at least. So this is... Uh, at the time, this technology was not available, I'm assuming. Following behind are two cars carrying the president's most important security personnel, ready to take action in the event of an attack. This okay. is the so-called halfback in which the president's personal secret service agents are located. No matter what happens, hmm. these agents will stay with the president. The other car carries the counter-assault team. These heavily armed agents can remain on site and fight off an attack. This creates a secure buffer between attackers and the president. Behind these cars are the control car and the support car. These transport additional Secret Service agents, essential presidential staff, as well as the president's personal doctor. But unknown to any of them, they are currently approaching another threat, as the motorcade arrives at the intersection the sniper has scouted out. The fact that there are two identical cars makes it difficult for the shooter, but unfortunately he catches a glimpse through the glass, aims and pulls the trigger. And nothing happens. The bullet, poof, other bullet picks that one. No, yes, that, no, that, that would be crazy technology. Oh, no. Such a scenario naturally brings back memories of the 1963 assassination of John F. Kennedy, oh, Kennedy, who was shot while driving his motorcade through Dallas. Since that time, the presidential limousine has undergone many changes. Wait, he, he, he got killed in Texas? Oh, that's amazing. No, no, I'm sorry. That's not amazing. What, what the hell I'm saying? So English, not a main language. What I meant to say is that's crazy. <laughs> not amazing. I mean, poor Kennedy. <laughs> oh, wow. Kennedy's car was a specially modified 1961. To be honest, that's a beautiful one. So Kennedy was in, in a Lincoln. I like it. Lincoln Continental. Unfortunately, though, only a few of the adjustments made were related to security improvements. The car was retrofitted with a luxurious heating and air conditioning system, as well as lights, sirens, fire extinguishers, and radio telephones for communication. The car was also extended to include a middle row of jump seats that can fold away when not in use. In addition, the roof was made to be completely removable, and the cushion on the rear bank where the president sits was raised. Both these modifications were designed to make the president more visible to the public. Unfortunately, it also made him more vulnerable. After sure. Kennedy's assassination, the car was massively rebuilt. A top of bulletproof glass was installed, and the body of the car was now protected with titanium armor. Per titanium? Oh, <laughs> okay. Perhaps somewhat symbolic, the light convertible appearance, representative of a hopeful time, was built up into a tank set to protect his more divisive successor. Luckily, today's limousine is well prepared for such an attack, and the shot has absolutely no chance of success. The current beast has been in service since September 2008. So there is no, not even a sniper can break the, the glass? Really? Because I, I know snipers, they send a, a super strong bullet, right? What the hell you are talking? I don't know, but it seems like. Teen ...and is a completely custom-built vehicle by General Motors. Although visually reminiscent of a sedan... Be honest, kind of beautiful. The car was actually built based on a truck platform. This was necessary to support the over 15,000 pound heavy armored vehicle. 
The interior is hermetically sealed against any form of chemical attack. The tires are able to continue driving even when shot, and the doors are 8 inches thick and equipped with handles that, with the switch of a button, can be electrified in order to prohibit entry to outsiders. Always. Okay, this is inside. Okay. <laughs> yeah, this video. Is, what? I, I'm going to show this video to my wife. <laughs> One hundred percent. This is inside. What the hell? It's inside the car. There is a storage of blood of the same blood type as the president. It <laughs> is a luxury tank designed to withstand any possible threat. But the biggest challenge in our scenario is yet to come, as just two blocks away, the van with the rocket launcher prepares to test the car's endurance. No chance that car can stand the rocket launcher. No chance. I mean, the rocket launcher makes things blow up completely. Bye. The no chance. I, I need a good explanation for this one. Behind the solid core of vehicles directly protecting the president are a few larger vans. These carry the press pool of reporters that travel with the president. This car behind is the ID car. It functions as the motorcade's communications hub, relaying information between the different vehicles and identifying problems early on. Behind so every time the president needs to go to a place, they spend, what, one million, two million dollars on all of this because this crew is so big. Dude, I, my friends, I remember when Obama, um, Barack Obama came to Portugal. Uh, it was really big news because, I mean, he's the president of, of America. And Obama, not sure about politics, I don't know, being honest with you, but... Uh, Obama was quite an iconic president, right? Was so famous. Um, of course, Trump is also crazy famous. Biden is also crazy famous. But uh, uh, I thought Obama at one point was maybe the most famous person in, in the world. And uh, it was news all over here. And um, the amount of people that came with Obama... I remember was Boeing after Boeing after Boeing. I was like, oh my God, we don't even have space in Lisbon to all of this. Obama may have to go back because there is no space. Uh, it was crazy. <laughs> Jokes aside. But uh, now I can see why. Holy. And I remember that car, actually. I, I, I think that the beast was already in place with, with Obama. Correct me if I'm wrong. That is the Hazardous Materials Mitigation Unit a vehicle equipped to respond to biological, chemical, and even nuclear attacks. Nuclear? It carries the necessary equipment and personnel to treat the effects of such an attack effectively. This is the so-called Roadrunner, recognizable by the antenna above the roof. This car is the mobile communication hub of the motorcade, ensuring that the president is fully operational at all times. Okay. The car provides satellite and internet communications sure. and it feeds a direct encrypted link to the Pentagon, allowing the president to hold secure phone and video conversations even when on road. At the back of the motorcade, a local ambulance will follow, just in case anything happens. And signifying the end of the motorcade are the so-called rear guards, local police cars that make sure that no other cars drive into the motorcade from the back. At this point, the presidential limousine... Wait a second. There is no helicopter? Because having an helicopter can actually make some sense, or am I crazy? ...in arrives at the intersection with the van. Quickly, a man jumps out and aims the rocket launcher directly at the limousine. Oh no. No, I think this time he's gone, my friends. For this case, the presidential limousines and the electronic countermeasure vehicle are equipped with smoke grenades. As soon as they are triggered, the cars disappear in the smoke, preventing a clear line of sight. This so-called infrared smoke screen is composed in such a way that it conceals the heat signature of objects. That means that even more complex guided missiles would not succeed in tracking the target. 
Meanwhile, the beast flees the scene. To the water. The presidential motorcade is a highly fought through system. Although the enormous number of cars may seem a bit arbitrary at first glance, a closer look reveals that not, the different yeah. vehicles all fulfill different tasks and together function as a White House on wheels. Though it's probably fair to say that, besides justified security concerns, there's also some element of projecting power at play here. So, it's fair to say that the President of America is the most protected person in the world? I mean... Maybe some guy in Saudi Arabia, because they have a lot of money, also have a lot of this. But I, I, I don't see. This technology seems so incredible. Maybe the Pope? No. Today, the motorcade managed to successfully avert three different dangers. But the motorcade is only one part of a huge security apparatus, with another element being Air Force One, the call sign for a heavily modified Boeing 747, on which the president travels. This plane was severely tested when it served as a refuge for George Bush during the attacks on the country on September 11, 2001 with the president spending much of that day on board. For my next... Oh, so the bush was in the air because he thought maybe there is more attacks. Am I making a correct assumption? This plane is probably crazy. I believe I saw a video about this actually. And yeah, this, this is... Oof. Next video, I took a look at this special perspective on September 11. And you can watch that video already right now on Nebula, where I upload all my videos. Damn it, if it was on YouTube, I would watch it. <laughs> videos first. And not only that, Nebula is also where you can see exclusive videos that I made just for Nebula subscribers, such okay. as the one I produced about the Bin Laden raid, detailing how this military operation unfolded. Because Nebula is a subscription service, I can work with higher budgets for these videos, creating way more ambitious projects. And this support has enabled me to increase my production quality for my YouTube videos as well, allowing me to do things I could have only dreamed of two years ago. Well, Besides nice. me, you can find... In By the way, I know this, this is a sponsor, my friends, but since I'm reacting, I think it's fair to also watch the sponsor incredible shows exclusive to Nebula from many other educational creators, as we are all building this streaming site together, with everything included in one subscription. And if you have a friend or a family member who is interested in smart, highly produced documentaries and shows, then this December we are offering a very special gift card, with which you can gift someone Nebula access for a lifetime. So please make sure to check out Nebula and thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you, my friend. Oh, this is the end already? Okay. Oh boy. All nukes are transported. Should I watch this one? Should I watch this one, my friends? Yeah, leave me a comment if you think this could be a good one. That said, thank you so much for spending this time with me. It really means a lot. Um, I thought this video was incredible. I, I had an idea that there was a lot of security around the US president, but uh, this much, kind of crazy. See you guys next time.